Hi, Stevens Creek. Welcome to Revival. It's Revival. Woo. We made it. We made it. Night favorite, one. Favorite week out of the whole year. We made it. I'm, and you made it too, right? Yes. I just saw so many hyped people walking yes. in the door. Yes. Let me tell you what else I saw. Grovetown and South Augusta campus. This is the best when we all can be under one roof together right. for the night. Right. I mean, I love that we have campuses all across, but it's so special when we all get to be one church and one building together. Yeah. And I don't know who is most excited to be here, honestly. I don't know. I mean, I think I think they're probably both pretty, all three. I think I we're know. all three just expected. And, you know, that's what we've been doing over the past couple of weeks, preparing for this moment right here, praying for you, praying for what the Lord is going to do right. during this season of 21 days. Uh-huh. And I, let me tell you, not only do we have people from all of our campuses here, but we have people who have never been here at the creek with us. I just made some friends, awesome. helped sit them in the riser section first so time nice. tonight. And so, I mean, it's awesome to have people like that checking us out at Revival Time. So if that's you, if you're hanging out with us for the first time, let us know that you are here. Connect with us. All you have to do is text the word connect, 706 706- Two 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 seven one two three, and we'll give you all the information. But just say hey. Right. Okay. So we said campuses are here, new guests are here. Sarah, do you know what that means? What? That there's a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We need to make space for everyone. So what we want to invite you to do right now: look around and scoot to the middle. People are still coming in. You can see that happening right now. And we want them just you're to right. stick on the aisle, be able to slip in, so they also can experience what's going to happen. Make today. room for everybody. But listen, my pocketbook is sitting on a chair. Uh-oh. So if you're buying my pocketbook, please don't move it. Please don't move it. We want to see too. We were here. <laughs> we were kidding. on time. You okay. can have it. You're right. We can sit in the back. Yes. Sylvia Park. It's got to be a full room. I think. Yes. Yeah. So you're no, probably going to meet somebody new because y'all are going to be packed in so yes. So that's good, meeting new friends and maybe even meeting someone from another campus, someone you haven't met before. I know. You know what, though? We also have Creek Kids going on yes. for all of the kiddos. Right. I just met some little girls. Well, I didn't meet them, but I saw some little girls coming in in their pajamas. No way. So I was like, hey, welcome to the Creek. And they are ready for bed, but they get to stay up past their bedtime tonight. They're happy. Because we have <laughs> revival. So what a treat. But I had another parent ask, Wait, are y'all just like babysitting or do you have stuff going on? I was like, let me tell you, we have a full service plan for all the kids every night of revival. So it will be valuable to have your kids here hanging out with us throughout the whole time. I know. And every single night, like you said, they're learning a different lesson. And I'll tell you, tonight is all about telling the truth. So when you go home, you can ask your kids, okay, what'd you learn about? And hopefully they'll tell you the truth about what they're learning. And every single night is going to be super impactful. Not only. tell ya, my kids, my kids, nobody had to teach them how to be dishonest. That was just a natural quality. Mm-hmm. And so tell them the truth. That's the kind of lesson. It's a good that lesson to learn. They're right. also going to be working on Bible memory while they're here. So, I mean, some of those times. Right. You know, they, they read a scripture a couple times. They already have it memorized with hand motions. Mm. I wish my brain was as sharp as those Creek kids. They're smart. They're <laughs> smart. Okay, let's also talk about what's happening in our auditorium tonight. We have Scott Shepherd all the way from Athens, Georgia, joining us. I know that's a close family friend of y'all's, and mm-hmm. I know Pastor Mari is excited to have a good pastor friend of his here tonight. That's right. Um, Scott pastors a church that's in our denomination, and um, he is he is inspired. He's going to have an inspired word for us. I'm looking forward to that for sure. I'm too. I'm too. And another thing that's exciting, I know we we shouted out a lot of people who are joining us, but we cannot forget online campus. We're streaming this across all of our platforms every single night. Oh, we've been having people ask all day. Oh, I know. Our DMs, the messages have been asking because people want to be here. So welcome. If you're joining us online, we're glad you're still participating and that's going to be there every single night. We know the best place to be is it's right here. here in the auditorium, experiencing it live in person. But we also know the Lord moves everywhere, right? Yeah. And he's going to move across the screens through technology. He's given us that ability. And so we're glad you're joining us. That's and, right. and you can help us actually get the word out. Mm-hmm. You can share this message, especially if you're joining us on Facebook or even copy the link, text it to a friend, say, hey, join me virtually at Revival tonight. We want just to get the word out. We know the Lord's going to do something great. We want as many people to hear this word as possible. Yeah, what a good reminder. Share, share, share. Get the word out. Let people know what God is doing. I know, and we're actually just a couple moments away from the beginning of our revival worship set. And let me tell you, our team has prayed over this, worked on the set list, and you're in for a treat tonight. So what we're going to do, we're just going to ask everyone right now, stand to your feet, no matter where you're joining us from, whatever you came in with tonight, we're believing that God is bigger. He's going to do great and mighty things. Let's worship together. 
Stephen's Creek, he's glad to be here. Say, oh yeah. Come on. Well, it's going to be an incredible night. I'm so glad you guys are here. My name's Todd, one of the pastors. If I hadn't had a chance to meet you. But man, we are excited about what God is going to do tonight and over the next four nights. We are coming with great expectation. We believe there's going to be miracles. We believe that people are going to be set free. We believe that relationships are going to be put back together. We believe that God is going to show up and he's going to show out. Are you glad of that? Yeah. Yeah. But it takes us coming together with that kind of expectation. And not for us to decide what God can or cannot do because God is, there's nothing that is too big for him. Nothing that is impossible for him. And if we can come in with that kind of faith, it doesn't matter how big the mountain is in front of us, that God can come and make a way. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? Yeah. It says in scriptures that those that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. He says where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst of that. And so what I want us to do today, we're going to pray and we're going to believe and we're going to ask God to have expectation in our hearts to believe that God can do anything. Amen. Let's pray. God, we just thank you. 
and we praise you for who you are and we're thankful to God that you're a big God and that there's nothing too big for you nothing is impossible for you and so today we call on the name we call on the name of Jehovah Nisi our banner God you go before us God we call on the name of Jehovah Jireh that you are our provider so God come and provide in people's lives tonight financially come and provide emotionally come and provide God spiritually come and provide in people's lives tonight God that you are Jehovah Shalom that you are our peace and when we say Jehovah Shalom come and meet meet us where we are depression has to go fear has to go anxiety has no place with Shalom in the building and so God we pray that you would come and we call on the name of Jehovah Rapha our healer and God I know that people are coming into this place with all kinds of different things going on those that are watching online so many things possibly going on in their lives and so we pray that Jehovah Rapha our healer will come and heal cancer and heal diabetes and heal arthritis and heal all the ailments that we might have and we call on the name of Jesus we call on that name we call on that name
Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Jehovah Shalom, will meet your needs.
The Bible says that we clap our hands and we shout unto God with a voice of triumph. So we're shouting tonight because we have victory in Jesus' name. We have victory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Patty and I are so excited uh, that you're here tonight for the first night of our revival. This event is something that we've been praying for for some time. In fact, just know that as you walk through the doors that you've been prayed over. For the last 21 days, uh, 22 days, every day we've met and we've asked God to move in your life, to move in your family to touch you right where you are. We have prayed and prayed for you. So tonight, what I need you to do is just to be open. To be open for God to move in your life, to be open for for change. Some of you will be saved tonight. Others of you will be filled with the Holy Spirit tonight. Some of you will uh, be healed tonight and others you'll see uh, a door of blessing or door of opportunity open. Because you see, we pull down the strongholds of the enemy and we've declared freedom in your life. And so just come and just expect that as we go through this service. Oh, once again, we're thrilled uh, that you're here and we've been praying for this and believing for it. And uh, I'm excited about our guest speaker. But before I introduce him, I want to uh, introduce our night's offering. And so I want to ask the ushers to prepare to come. And I need to ask you to prepare to give. And you say, whoa, what's an offering in church? So I want you to meet our ushers. Ushers, wave at these folks. They've never seen you. So we pull out the offering buckets uh, buckets during revivals because we want to go old school. But you can give um, at the kiosk and online by texting the word GIVE to 706-222-7123. And this offering is just going to be a seed offering for God to continue to move in revival uh, in our community. And so ask the Lord what he would have you to give and just do whatever he tells you to do. Our speaker tonight is Scott Shepherd, and Scott is the lead pastor of Cornerstone Church in Athens, Georgia. How many Georgia fans do we have? Any Georgia fans here? Okay. If you've ever been to Athens and you're going down you know, like from Washington and, you know, through that. And then you get to Athens and you see this huge church on the left. That's Cornerstone. And so it, it like wakes you up and say, oh, I'm in the big city now. And so uh, Scott and Elizabeth pastor there have been there over 20 years. And they've seen God do some amazing um, work there. Uh, been noted as one of the fastest growing churches in America at times. And I'm just honored to see what God is doing in their work and in Athens, but more than that, I'm honored to call him a friend. So he and uh, Elizabeth have been uh, close friends with Patty and mine for uh, many years, and we're just, we love them, and we want to share their ministry with you, and that's why he's here. Now, tomorrow night is Monday, and what's Monday? Mo Monday, Monday, okay? So you know Mo Monday is tomorrow night, okay? And so just be uh, ready uh, for that. You may need to get some extra sleep tonight because Mo may have you running or something. But Mo Monday, just remember that through the day. Well, God bless you today as you give.
God, we're so thankful that we can be in your presence. And it's our prayer that as we go through the rest of this evening and as Pastor Shepherd comes, God, that you would anoint his words. And as he speaks, it's like he's speaking right to our hearts. Exactly what we need. And so, God, have your way in this place tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, come on, let's just one more time. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. He's worthy. Thanks so much for worshiping with us. You guys may be seated. Stevens Creek. Come on, how many are excited about being in church tonight? Come on, everybody. Revival 2023. How many are fired up? You're expecting God to do something big in this place? Come on, I got about 30% of you. Anybody expecting God to do something big in this place? Hey, here's what I know. Here's what I know. Hundreds of you have been showing up early in the morning, praying God's presence into this building. And the Bible says, when you seek me, you'll find me. Anything's possible when the presence of God is here. Tonight, you've ushered in the presence of a living God who not only hears us when we pray, but he promises to move on our behalf when we pray. And I don't know about you, but I'm expecting God to do something tonight. I'm expecting to hear from the Lord and to see the Lord do things that only God can do. Come on, anybody, are you glad to be in church on Sunday night? I mean, you could be in a lot of places. But you're here, right? Right here. Hey, before I, before I dive in, let me, just, let me just say what an honor it is to, to, to be here. I've been really looking forward to this for, um, for a while. Since, since Pastor Marty called and said, hey, Scott, would you be a part of this this year? Um, I've been looking forward to, to tonight. Believe that God has something really special that he wants to say to you and he wants to do in you. I want to prime the pump. Mo told me the other day, he said, hey, now listen, don't you get them so fired up. I got nothing left on Monday night. I said, listen, bro, I'm just going to get on base and hope that you can knock me in. So so we're going to have a good time. But I just, I got to say to you before I get started, don't you ever, 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 ever take for granted what God's doing in this place. Don't ever take for granted what you have in Pastor Marty and Patty Baker. Listen, if they were cars, I'm telling you, hey, hold on. If if they were cars, I was thinking about it on the way over. If they were cars, they'd be like a Bentley. You know what I mean? They're like a a Rolls Royce. Now, they wouldn't be a Pinto or something. I mean, I've seen some Pinto pastors. That's a Rolls Royce pastor right there. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you've got got the best of the best of the best of the best. And it's not uncommon. It it is very uncommon what God's doing in this place. And it would be a travesty. For his people to take for granted what he's doing. For us to call ordinary what he calls special. And what God's doing in this place is very, very special. What he's doing through this church and in and around this city, literally around the world through this church. And I just want to say thank you to to Pastor Marty and to Patty, some of mine and Elizabeth's very best friends. My wife was coming until this afternoon, but my son is getting married this weekend. And he decided today during church that he wanted to move all of his clothes out into their new place and ask his mother to help him. So guess what Trump's coming with your husband to preach at Stevens Creek? Your son getting married. And then my daughter, who just had our grandbaby, she's she's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. And, um, and And my daughter said, well, hey, mom, I need you to kind of be available because I may need you to watch the baby tonight. And guess what else Trump's following Scott to preach anywhere? The grandbaby. So she sends her love. And she texts Patty and said, would you please forgive me for not being here tonight? But um, she does send her, her love to all of you. And I just got to say one more thing about Stevens Creek. Um, I want you to know how many people watch you and look to you and hope to be able to emulate what God has done through you in places and churches and ministries all over, all over this state and literally around the nation. You're being, you're being watched. And I want to just, just commend you because you're being watched and you're, you're conducting yourself 
in a way that you can be followed. And I just want to encourage you to continue to do ministry in a way that's worthy of people who are learning to do ministry right can continue to follow you. So thank you for what you do for your community. Thank you for what you do for the world. Thank you for what you do in the name of Jesus. Thank you for taking serious the responsibility of making Jesus known to a world who desperately needs to see Jesus. So come on, you've given them a hand, you've given Jesus a hand. Now give yourselves a hand and I'm gonna preach, all right? You guys are awesome. Hey, and in, and in honor of Pastor Marty, who always likes to start with something a little funny, I thought I would try to bring, bring, one, bring one out. So I want to help all the single ladies in the house tonight. Come on. Any single ladies say, oh, yeah. All right, I got 12 of you. Good. You did a good job hooking them up. What do you do? Marty, bring people to church and like, <laughs> Marty's like, not going to hook you up. Just help you out. Y'all come on in. Find somebody. All right, here, here, very important for you ladies that are going to be looking for a man. Very important things. I want to just tell you some things you need to remember. Number one, it's very, very important for you to find a man who has a job <laughs> and, 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 and is willing to help you around the house. Number two, it's important that you find a man who can make you laugh. You, 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 need, to, you need to find a man who, who you can count on, who won't lie to you, who will be honest to you. And then you need, to, you need to find a man who loves you so much that he recognizes you're worth spoiling. And then number five is you need to make sure that these four men don't know each other. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I came t- t- tonight, I, I really am expecting, I really am expecting God to do things. And I told Pastor Marty early and before we came out, I said, hey, there's some things you know, you ever notice people, people who have the ability to look um, beyond where things are right now are always people that are encouraged. But people who don't have the ability to see any further than what things are right now are always discouraged. And I heard about a guy who had um, grown up in age and his, and his family put him in a nursing home and he actually liked the place, made good friends and he, and he, had, um, he had joined this chess team. And um, one day he was, he was playing at a chess tournament and he noticed the other side of the room, there, there was an old lady who was just staring at him. She couldn't take her eyes off of him. And at first he was flattered. He's like, yeah, old guy still got it. But after a few minutes, he, he, he became like uncomfortable and he couldn't even focus on his next move. So he said, I'll, I'll, I'll settle this lady down. I'll just, I'll just stare her down. So he stared back at her. The longer he stared, the longer she stared. She wouldn't take her eyes off of him. So he says, all right, I'll put a stop to it. So he walks over and he says, ma'am, I can't help but notice that you keep staring at me and I'm a little uncomfortable. I wish you would stop. And she says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I just can't help but think about how much you look like my third husband. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. How many times have you been married? She said, twice. See, there's something, there's something about being able to see beyond where things are. You know what I mean? And that's what I hope that, that, that you'll do tonight. I hope that no matter where you are in life, no matter what challenges you may go, be going through, I hope that you have the ability to see that all things are possible through God. That things don't have to always be the way they may presently be. But there's always hope in Jesus. Amen. In the presence of God, anything is possible. How many believe God's presence is here? Here's what that means. Anything, anything is possible. I want to I tell you a story tonight, a very familiar story out of Acts chapter 3. I know you guys have been doing a study on the, on the Holy Spirit. And, and, and Acts is one of my favorite books of the Bible. Luke, who wrote the book, is one of my favorite people in the Bible. And it's a real, it's kind of, kind of, a, long, um, kind of a long story, but I want to just... I want to take a minute and read the whole, the whole thing to you, and then I want to just talk about it for a few minutes. Here's what the Bible says. One day, Peter and John, they were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. It was about three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth had been carried to the temple gates called Beautiful, where he was placed there every day to beg for those who were going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take my, took him by the right hand, 
and he helped him up. And instantly, the Bible says, his feet and his ankles became well, and he jumped up to his feet, and he walked. I don't think he walked. I think he, like, did the Cupid shuffle or something like that all the way in the temple. You know, I mean, if you hadn't walked for 40 years, and all of a sudden God healed your feet, I mean, no, you'd be doing something besides walking. He says that, watch this, it says, it says, then, then he, he went with them into the temple courts. He was walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him praising God, they recognized that he was the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gates, beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, he says, all the people were astonished. They came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our power or our godliness, we made this man walk? He says, listen, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate. Though he had decided that he was going to let him go, you disowned the holy and righteous one and you asked a murderer to be released to you. He said, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses of this. He says, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man who you see and is now strong, it is Jesus' name and faith in that name that comes through him and has completely healed this man. Now, let me tell you the first thing you need to know about this story. That's just good Bible right there. That's just a good God and a good story about his faithfulness in the life of good people. But the other thing you need to know is when this is happening. This is happening just like right after the resurrection of Jesus. This isn't something that happens, you know, weeks or months or years later. This is like right after the resurrection of of Jesus. This is fresh. I mean, the resurrection, the crucifixion, it's all very fresh and and it's very real. The gate is beautiful. In fact, they even named it beautiful. It was ornate, and it was, it was a spectacular sight. It, it was there. It was demolished. It was so beautiful, the Romans destroyed it in A.D. 70 because they didn't want there to be any of the beauty left that represented God, the God of Israel. And I don't have any doubts that Jesus had passed by this man many times. The Bible says that he had been there for year after year after year, and Jesus had gone into this temple courts Many, many times. Nobody knows how many times Jesus walked past this blind man, this lame man, and he never healed the man. The Bible doesn't tell us why. We have no idea why Jesus passed this man over and over and over again. Yet on this day, the same Jesus that passed by this man many times is the same Jesus that healed the man through his disciples a few days later. This man that was laying at the gate, he's a, he's a great character in the Bible because he had no idea that today was going to be the day that something special would happen in his life. He'd gone to do what he does every day, and that is just beg people for food. He didn't know that this was going to be a day that his life would be changed. He didn't know that this was going to be a day that everything was going to be transformed He didn't know that today was going to be anything big or anything special, but God knew. And here's what I believe. All the way over here, I prayed, God, may this be a day that people who came in not expecting anything to happen in their life would have something transformative happen in their life. For those of you who came in today and you don't think today's anything special, it's just the first day of revival. It's going to be another night in church. I prayed, God, may this be a day that marks their life forever. May those who aren't expecting anything to happen, may the greatest thing that happens happen to them tonight. Because that's where this man was. He didn't expect anything to happen, but something, something happened that day. And for those of you that are here today, maybe your marriage needs to be changed or transformed. I'm just praying that tonight that thing would be, that's broken would be healed. For those that are hurt emotionally, for those that are hurting physically, for those that are young, for those that are old, for those that are struggling financially, I'm just praying that today would be the day that God turns something around. Because sometimes as people, we're like this man, we get so used to begging begging, begging, and God is ready to do a breakthrough, but we don't even recognize God's ready to break through because we get so used to begging God. And this man didn't expect anything big. 
because he had gotten so used to doing what he did time after time after time. He didn't think that God was going to do anything special. He just thought these guys were going to, to drop a few change, a little change in, in this man's bucket. He'd been doing the same thing for 40 years. Come on, think about that. 40 years. 40 years people had been picking him up and carrying him to the temple gates. For 40 years he had been holding out the same tin can, asking for food, begging for mercy. Begging for help. Got some change you can spare? How about a little money for the lame man? You have some mercy on a guy that can't walk? 40, 40 years this guy was, was lame. 40 years in the same struggle, day after day after day. The same issue, the same hurdles, day after day that this guy was trying to get over. Let me just ask you this. Have you, ever, have you ever felt like you were stuck in a season? Have you ever felt like you were just like, like stuck in a moment that you couldn't get past? I mean, have, have you ever felt like you were just like on this, on this cycle and you're wondering, God, when is it ever gonna change? God, when are you gonna ever move on my behalf? Some of you, maybe it's in your family and you look back at your family and it's like divorce, 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 and now your marriage is a mess. And you look at your, your debt. Oh, they were in debt, my family. Oh, yeah, they were in debt, my family. Oh, yeah, they were covered up in debt. And now you look at your financial situation and you're buried in debt. Maybe it's brokenness and you look back at your family and it's one broken piece after another. And now you look at your life and you shined up on the outside and it looks good on the outside. You drove in in a nice car, you got on nice clothes, you smell good, you look good, but on the inside there's just brokenness. And it's like, when is the cycle ever, ever going to end? God, when are things ever going to be different for me? You know what I love about the Bible? The Bible doesn't shy away from the fact that sometimes even as believers, we get stuck. The, the Bible, it, it doesn't shy away from the idea that, that, that sometimes we find ourselves in places that we don't wanna be, with people that we don't wanna be around, we just feel lame. The Bible doesn't hide behind the fact that sometimes we find ourselves in situations that we just don't want to be there. We don't want to be with who we're with. But you know what? We get used to just being there. We get like the, the lame man, 40 years of doing the same thing. And you know what he does? He has no expectation. You know why? Because it's easier to exist than it is to expect. We get to a place sometimes in our marriage, it's just easier to exist in this marriage than it is to expect something greater. It's just easier to exist in this job than it is to expect something better. It's easier to exist in this addiction or this stronghold than it is to expect something better. It's easier to exist in this place that I'm in than it is to expect for God to do something better. It's easier to exist in, in this body and just take whatever happens and do whatever I wanna do than to expect to treat it like the temple of God and expect God to honor the temple with good health. It's easier sometimes to, to just exist in the cycle, just to exist in our lameness than it is to expect God to do really great things in our life. And that's where this man had gotten to in his life 40 years. Same thing every day, being carried to a gate, begging people for money. And he started existing rather than expecting just existed in the same fierce cycle, the same struggle, stuck in the same place over and over. And I'm not down on the guy and I'm not criticizing the guy because you know what I know? I know what it's like to pray and ask God to do something and it seems like the answer never comes. I know what it's like to, to ask God, God, take this away. God, bring this into my life. And it feels like it, it, never, it never comes. I know what it feels like to see God moving on everybody else's behalf, but not moving on my behalf. Have you ever been praying for something and it felt like God never did it for you, but he was doing it for people around you? 
I remember my dad, whenever I was growing up, my dad was pastoring a church in Inverness, Florida. It was an amazing time and, and miracles were happening. The church had already doubled in size and, and, and my dad was so sick, he was literally dying with asthma. He would preach on Sunday morning, Sunday night, go in the hospital. He would be in the hospital Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. They would let him out on Wednesday to go preach on Wednesday night. He would go back in the hospital on Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. He was in the hospital, he would go out and preach and then he would get out again and he would go back in again and it was this vicious cycle and what was crazy is miracles were happening in the church. News reporters were coming out and writing articles on the miracles that were happening in this church. And my dad's pastor in the church preaching the revivals. And my dad's like, God, why are you healing everybody around me? But I'm not being healed. I mean, I don't know about you, but, but I know what it feels like to be stuck. To be stuck in a cycle. The same fierce cycle. And on this day, when, when this lame man sees Peter and John coming towards the temple and he looks at them and, 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 and he, he, says, he says, give me some money. And the Bible says Peter and John looked at the man and they said, no, you look at us first. And I, I've always thought that when the lame man asked them for money, he was already looking at them. He was like, hey, will you guys give me some money? But the Bible says he wasn't looking at them. It says that Peter had to say to the lame man, hey, look at us. When you think about the posture of this man, he'd gotten so used to begging that, that I just believed that he was in the posture of many people who find themselves worn out in a vicious cycle and they found themselves in a position that it's easier just to exist than it is to expect. I get a picture of this man doing what most beggars do and he's got his head down and he's got his hands up and he said, hey, can you guys please just, just give me a little money? Just give me a, a, a little, just, just a little, just give me some of the scraps from your table. I'm not used to people noticing me. I'm not used to people caring for me. I'm not used to people acknowledging my existence. I'm not used to people's attention. I'm not used to people recognizing me. I'm not used to people adding value to me. Just give me a little bit of change. Whatever you have to spare, give me a little bit. But the Bible says that Peter and John looked at that man. And Peter and John, they recognized that on that day, they were representatives of Jesus Christ. And as representatives of Jesus Christ, we don't just walk past people. We don't walk to the other side of the street to avoid people. We don't let people who are like us not get near us because we're uncomfortable around people people as representatives of Jesus we look at them and we restore value to them we say listen look at me look into the eyes you are worthy you are worth Jesus dying on the cross for and I am going to restore the same value to you that the cross says you are worthy of look at us because as representatives of Jesus we don't avoid people. We don't disrespect people. We don't ignore people. We don't reject people. We value people and we add value to people. Peter and John that day, they said, hey, listen, before we do anything for you, look at us because we are going to restore value back to you. You know why you have greeters at the front door? You know why you have parking people out in the parking lot here at the church? It's because this church understands that there are people who God's going to send to this church every week and they're going to have had doors slammed on them all week long. But when they come to Stevens Creek, there's going to be some loving, caring servant at the door and they say, hey, you've had doors slammed on you all week. Let us open the door to the presence of God. That's adding value to people. That's restoring the value to people that God says that they are, they are worthy of. When you represent Jesus, when I represent Jesus, the first lesson that Peter and John teach us is you don't just walk past people. You restore the value in people that the cross says they are worthy of. And I remember that, that reading this story and, and thinking about, God, what is it that you want to teach us through, through this story? Think about Peter and John looking at them saying, look at us. L look, look at us in, in the eye. Look, look at us. Because there's value that you have. There's worth that you have that you, needed, you need to be reminded of that, that, that God sees the worth and the value in you. And we declare to you, look at us, because today we're going to show you that God is on your side. 
That he's able to do something that's bigger than anything you expected him to do. Today, you're going to find out that the wait has been worth it. That all 40 years, the time that you spent waiting today, it's going to be worth the wait. The guy says, come on, just give me some money. They said, no, we don't have money. We don't have any money. We don't have an ATM machine. We don't have Venmo. We don't have PayPal. We don't have any, we don't have any, any money, but we got something else. We got something for you, but it's not money. We got something that somebody paid for you, but you can't pay for it. We got something that somebody went to a cross, an old rugged cross. They hung up on a cross. They spread their arms. They had nails driven in their feet and their hands and then their size. And he paid the price so that you can be healed. So what we give you today is more than money. We're going to give you healing in the name of Jesus. Now, get up and walk. Get up and walk. The Bible says that they reached down and they grabbed that man by the hand. And they added value to him. You know what they had to do first? This was, this was amazing. Whenever you think about the story, this man, they, they, they were, these guys, I mean, think about these Christians, these followers of Jesus. Come on. Anybody want to be like Peter and John? I mean, they just walk around with this crazy faith and they walk into a moment. Because of their faith. Anybody besides me? Come on. Anybody besides me want to walk in those kind of moments? Like you want a faith like that that's so crazy that you can just step in and God says, okay, this is a moment. You're able to restore value and restore hope and restore dignity to someone that life has just ripped the dignity out of. I'll never forget. I was... um, uh, um, I learned a really, really great lesson from, from Mark Rick, from Coach Rick. Um, he and I are, are accountability partners. We have been for years. We meet every Thursday. We, we, we run and we pray and we, and we hold each other accountable. And we were doing an event together in South Georgia a couple of years ago. And um, it was an event, you know, as Parkinson's gets, gets, gets the best of him sometimes. And it was a big event and I was standing there with him and he was taking pictures with everybody. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And he, and he finally gave me the nod, and so I, I come over to get him to take him back to his seat. And, and um, the next Thursday, we're, we're over by the church, and we're, we're on our track. And, and I said, Mark, I appreciate the way you handled all those people Monday night. He said, what do you mean, Scott? I said, I said you made every person in that room feel special and valuable. And without missing a moment, he looked back at him and he, he said, well, Scott, it's because they are special and they are valuable. And I thought that's what people who represent Christ know. When you walk as a representative of Christ, listen, when you know who you are, it's then that you know what to do. Peter and John in that moment, they, they knew that they had to restore this man's dignity. They had to add value to him. They had to remind him that he, that he, is, he, is, that he is worthy of a miracle. And, and what's the first thing they did? They had, to, they had to up the level of his expectation because the man had no expectation. He was just existing He'd gotten used to, to, to existing in the, in the lameness of his life, and he became, became just existent in the fact that he was going to be a beggar for the rest of his life. But the Bible says that, that they had to raise the level of his expectation. And Peter and John, the Bible says that they, they, they reach down, and they say, hey, listen, your, your expectation is too low. He says, come on, I just need some money. And they say, no, you're expecting money, but we've got something so, so much greater for you. You, you know, you've just become existent thinking that money is your answer, but, but, what we, but what we have for you, coins and cash, it can't buy it. What we have for you is not because we're special, but it's because he's special. Look at us, not because we have anything to offer you, but the one we've been with has something to offer you. We don't have anything great on the inside of us, but the one that we're with, he's called us to go into the world and make disciples, to share the gospel, to share the good news, to lay hands on the sick so that they can recover and they can be healed. Look at us because we're about to restore something to you. We're about to raise the level of your expectations. Listen, as followers of Jesus, you know, one of the greatest things that we can do as a church is to do every Everything possible to raise the level of expectation for the people who come into this place. 
When people come in on Sunday morning for all the teams and all the volunteers and the prayer warriors to be prayed up, that when we come in, people who are expecting nothing, all of a sudden their level of expectation increases and they believe, they begin to believe that in the presence of God, maybe something special can happen. That's what happens in this story. This man's just expecting money. He's just existing, just hoping to make, you know, his budget for another day. And they say, listen, before anything powerful can happen, we've got to raise the level of your expectation. Look at us, not because we're great, but because we spent time with one who is great. I don't have any money, he says, but what I have, what I have is a gift from heaven. Coins can't buy it, cash can't buy it, but what I have, I am going to give to you. And he reached down and he said he took his right hand. And when he did, he lifted his expectation. And in a moment, this man that hadn't walked in 40 years, the Bible says that his ankles and his feet, they became strong. And, and, and they, began to, they began to move like they had never moved before. And he began to dance and he began to run. And the Bible says he began to praise. And this man who had, had just learned to exist. And you know what? People come to church week after week, old people, young people, And it's like, we're just going to exist. I'm going to exist, you know, in this dead-end job. I'm going to exist in this dead-end relationship. I'm going to exist in this marriage that isn't living in abundance. I'm going to exist with bad health. I'm going to exist with emotional anxiety. I'm just going to exist and just work my way through life. Listen, revival in the presence of God is to take his people from a position of existing to a position of expecting. And when God reaches down and he grabs your hand, Things that were not well begin to become well, and you begin to walk where you couldn't walk and run where you couldn't run and go where you couldn't go. That's the power of the gospel. That's the power of a relationship with Jesus. And you know who he's doing it for? Not young people, not old people, not rich people, not poor people, not fat people, not skinny people, not tall people or short people. He's doing it for all people. He's reaching down into the lives and the circumstances and the dead end places of all people. And he's saying, hey, take my hand. Let me pick you up. Those feet that hadn't been able to move. Let me show you how they can move. That marriage that hadn't been able to function. Let me show you how it can become your ministry. That kid that was drifting away from God. Let me show you how I can bring them back. That body that's been sick and that mind that's been oppressed. Come on, reach down. Raise your level of expectation. Let me show you how you can be well again. It's powerful. Such a beautiful, beautiful story about the power of the power of God. And all we have to say is, God, I trust you. I've got a guy in my church, Brandon. He texted me the other day, and years years ago, about 17 or 18 years ago, he was a he was a big party guy in, in Athens. And Raised up in Athens and, and, and then you know, at university and became a functioning alcoholic, became a very successful young businessman. Started popping in and out of church. His best friend was solid, solid follower of Jesus. Prayed for him all the time. He called me one day and he said, man, drunk. He said, Brandon's at home. He's wasted. He hadn't showered. He hadn't been out of the house in a couple of days. I don't know what to do. And I said, I'll meet you over there. So I go to his house and I'm beating on the door and he's like, get out of here, preacher. Get out of here. I'm like, I ain't leaving. I'll outlast you. I'm not leaving. Eventually, he opens the door. He hadn't shaved. He'd got no shirt on. His wife wouldn't come back home. I waited long enough until he got into that crying stage. You know what I mean? You ever been like crying drunk? No, don't say yes. Just don't, don't acknowledge that. <laughs> Pastor Marty, what kind of church? <laughs> Long story short, listen, long story short, 
one moment that day, listen, that day was his last drink of alcohol. He never, listen, to this day, he's never taking another drink of alcohol. God restored his full business, one of the largest real estate businesses in all of Athens. He served on my board two different terms for six years now. He's been a board member at my church. He texted me the other day. Thursday, he texted me. Last Tuesday night in a board meeting, he said, guys, I know, it's, I know it sounds trivial to you, but he said, you know, me and Christy have never been able to have kids. We've got this dog that's our kid. And he said, the dog's sick, and I won't even tell you how much money I've spent at the university veterinarian hospital, but it doesn't look like the dog's going to make it. And he said, I know it's trivial to a bunch of you guys, but I'm going to ask you to pray with me for my dog. And uh, he texted me Thursday. And I wish I could read the text to you. Long story short is he said, Pastor, it's true. It's true. God cares about the smallest things in our life. It's not just the big things, but it's the small things. He says, they sent my dog home and the dog's perfect. They can't find anything wrong with my dog. They've done anything but everything but declare a miracle over my dog. I thought, you know, it was because Brandon refused to live in a state of existence and decided to live in a state of expectation. He decided that he's just not going to exist with something even as trivial as a sick dog. But he was going to expect God to heal what was close to his heart and special to him. And I just got to tell you, in the same way that God met that man right where he was, God's got the power to meet you right where you are. And the Bible says that, that, that in, that, in that, that moment, his expectations were raised. And it was a miracle. Can I tell you another miracle you don't want to miss? It's the miracle that's happening here at Stevens Creek. When I think about this church and, and what's going on in this church, there's miracle after miracle. It's a miracle that hundreds of people will show up at 7 o'clock in the morning and pray. It's a miracle that you can get this many people back in church after a Sunday morning for revival. It's a miracle that this church recognizes that whoever wins the kids wins the future. And you're willing to invest your money and invest your time into our kids' ministry and, and into our student ministry. And hundreds of kids are giving their lives to Jesus. It's a miracle. It's, it's a miracle that you'll open up the campuses you're opening up. It's a miracle that you'll run the Dream Center. It's a miracle that God is putting families back together. And you have to have so many baptisms and so many people are coming to Christ week after week after week. It's a miracle. But you know why the miracle's happening? The miracle's happening because there are people, there are people who will pray and they will call out on God. They'll sweat, they'll bleed, they'll cry and say, God, do something great in our church. Do something great in our city. Do something great in in our home and they'll show up early and they'll say late and they'll serve and they'll do whatever it takes to invite the presence of God and listen don't ever don't ever take that for granted don't ever think I can miss a few weeks in church I mean presence of God's always there there's always going to be miracles happen no don't count as trivial when God is doing something special Show up for revival. Invite your friends. Call your neighbors. Call your family. Tell your co-workers tomorrow. Don't miss Monday night Mo. It's going to be awesome. Bring somebody. Why? Because when you do that, you're taking them from a place of existing to a place of expectation. And when people begin to expect, anything is possible. Marriages can be healed. Souls can be reformed. Addiction can be broken. Depression can be broken. Anything is possible. You know what happened? You know what happened next? It went straight from expectation because their expectations rose. And, 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 and the Bible says that when their expectations rose, everything, everything began to happen. And then when their expectations got met, what happened? It went to a place of celebration. They lifted it. Listen, when you lift people's expectations, they will begin to celebrate. I'm so glad that Stevens Creek is a place of celebration. I'm so glad that whenever I walked in this room, people were already clapping their hands. They were already lifting up their voices. 
I'm so glad that this is a place that people know how to pray and are willing to set aside time to pray. I'm so glad that you have a band up here who can lead worship out here. You know why they can lead you in worship here? Because they haven't been in rehearsal back there. They've been in worship back there. And because they've been worshiping back there, they're prepared to lead you in worship out here. I'm, I'm happy to see people in a room that will say amen when the preacher says something that they agree with. Where they'll clap their hands when the preacher says something that I, I, you, you may not give a lot, but I see some of you that you're just tapping your toes. That's enough. You're giving something. But you know what celebration does? Celebration gets you to a place where you say, God, I'm giving you all of me. You get my good voice and you get my bad voice. You get my elbow, you get my hands, you get my knees, you get my hips. I used to use these hips for the world, but now I'm using them for you, Jesus. You get, you get everything, every part of me. You get, you get all of it. That's what celebration looks like. That's what celebration looks like. And I just gotta, I just gotta, gotta tell you, we have to give God thanks. And I just wanna say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, can you say thank you, Jesus? Come on, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Thank you for the souls that are being saved, for the people that are being delivered. Thank you for the marriages that are being restored. Thank you for the lives that are being transformed. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your wisdom. Thank you for your discernment, God. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, God. But people then begin to do what people do now. The Bible says that Immediately the man starts dancing and shouting around the, the, the temple and, and the people start looking at Peter and John. Peter and John recognize that these people are doing what most people do and that is when God does a miracle, people start looking at the one that God did the miracle through rather than the one who actually did the miracle. So Peter and John say, hey, wait a minute, this, this has got to stop. And they said, why do you stare at us as if we had the power or the godliness to bring this man back to walking? Like we're so holy, we're so pure that we could ever do anything like this. Yes, we're godly. Yes, we put God first. Yes, we live a life that honors God. But don't you ever think for a moment that we could perform this kind of a miracle. And then they bring them back to Jesus and they say, hey, you got to remember, this is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers. He has glorified his servant, Jesus, and he has glorified his servant, who? Jesus. He's glorified his servant, who? Jesus. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen because of Jesus. And you know what I love about churches like, like Stevens Creek, about, about this church is is you don't have leaders who want to wear the glory on their shoulders. You have leaders who will, who will put a roadblock up against anybody who comes into the church and wants to wear the glory on their shoulders. You have a church that recognizes if there's going to be any glory, the glory is going to go to Jesus. If anything good happens, it's going to happen because of Jesus. Nobody else except for Jesus. Because here's what I know, Stevens Creek has never saved a soul. G Pastor Marty has never saved a soul. The Bible says that there is, there is a name that's above every name. And at that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and glory would go to the Father in the name of Jesus. Come on, anybody grateful for Jesus right now? Anybody just grateful? Come on, stand up on your feet, will you? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand up. I want you to give 30 seconds of praise to Jesus. If you can't say anything else, just say Jesus. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we honor you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being good. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. We Come on, five more seconds. Jesus, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. We celebrate you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In your name, amen. Amen. I'm going to read one more scripture to you. In fact, I want to ask them to put Acts 3 verse 16 up on the screen because I want you to read it. you got to almost see it to believe it. I want you to read it out loud to me, with me. Come on, let's read. It's by faith 
in the name of Jesus that this man who you see and you know that's how he was made strong it is Jesus name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed this man here's what I know here's what I know if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen because of Jesus and I want to pray I want to pray for some of you tonight because there's some of you who've come into revival and you're stuck you're stuck in a season your, your marriage may be stuck in a place that's not so good you may feel stuck in a career that that you're not passionate about that you don't enjoy you may be stuck in an addiction that nobody else knows about but I can tell you this Jesus knows about it and here's what he said if you will choose that you're no longer going to be satisfied to just exist in it you're not going to be a functioning addict you're not going to be a functioning anything that you're going to be a healed and you're going to be a whole child of the living God because you went from ex- some existing to expecting he says that he'll reach down his hand and he'll meet you he'll pick you up and he'll heal whatever he'll heal whatever's broken in you and you like that lame man you might have been carried into this place but you can go dancing out of this place there's some of you that are here and the truth is that you battle depression you battle you battle with loneliness there's some that are here and you nobody even knows but you've contemplated leaving this world you've had days that you've not even wanted to be and I'm just gonna tell you the, the Spirit of the Lord just, just, just is prompting my heart right now. Some of you, it was everything you could do to get out of bed this morning. It was everything you could do to get dressed. It was everything you could do to even drive to get here to this place. Some of you have panic attacks. and Being in a room with people like this drives you nuts. And the only reason that you're here is because you don't, you're tired of being stuck. You don't want to be stuck with those thoughts. You don't want to be stuck carrying those weights. You don't want to be stuck in that place. You're ready for the cycle to end. You're ready for the God of heaven to reach down his hand and say, get up and walk in the name of Jesus. And I don't know who you are and I don't know where you are, but I'm telling you on the first night of revival, there's nothing greater that could happen to you than if you're stuck, you just get unstuck. Because you get unstuck tonight, you know what may happen tomorrow night? You may be Peter and you may be John. And it may may be you that's walking by somebody else and says, hey, we don't have any silver and we don't have any gold, but we've been with Jesus and he got us unstuck. Guess what? He can get you unstuck in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. No more depression. No more addiction. No more failed marriage. No more pain in your body. No more sickness. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Because representatives of Jesus know that they don't just walk past people, that they go to people and they bring healing and add value into their lives. Now, I don't know who you are. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something bold. Forget about anybody in the room. If the Holy Spirit has prompted you tonight and given you the faith to believe for whatever the miracle is that you need, Forget about what anybody else thinks in this room. Let me tell you something. God's opinion of you makes everybody else's opinion of you irrelevant. And if, and if God's speaking to you, don't miss the moment. And if you're here, you would say, Scott, I'm tired of being stuck. I'm tired of seeing other people get what I've been asking God for. And I will no longer be a child of God who's satisfied existing in the same posture, in the same position. I hope somebody notices. I hope somebody sees me. I hope somebody will add value to me. I hope somebody will be kind to me. But I'm going to raise my head. I'm going to look into the eyes of Jesus. And I'm going to say, I'm expecting you to do what only you can do. And I don't know who you are. I'm going to ask our prayer partners to come very quickly and just stand around the altar and prepare to receive you. 
because I'm believing God to do miracles. I didn't, I didn't leave my family tonight and come over to Augusta just to yell at a bunch of people for a few minutes. I came because I believed God was going to do miracles in people's lives who would believe God for miracles. If you're here today and you would say, Scott, I'm stuck. I'm tired of existing. I'm expecting God to do something that only he can do. I want you to get out of your seat very quickly and I want you to just come and stand in this altar. They're going to sing a song and I'm just going to continue to pray, but very quickly, don't wait. Don't wait to see who comes. Don't wait on anybody else. Just If God's prompting you, don't make him wait on you. Just get out of your seat and come and say, God, I'm all yours. Heal what's broken. Go ahead. You can begin to pray, guys. Just begin to pray. Todd, you can begin to sing. I'm going to pray for you as you come. Lord, as they come, I just pray that you would begin to heal their hearts already. Lord, you know the brokenness. Lord, you know those that are struggling in every area of their life. Lord, I'm asking you to move on their behalf. Lord, I pray that as they come, they leave. A state of existing and they step into a state of expecting you to do something powerful in their lives. I'd move for them.
I love that song because we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. That means we're surrendering it to him. You've prayed over the last few minutes. You've surrendered that problem. You surrendered that situation. You've given it to Jesus. Do not walk out of this door and take that with you. You are free in Jesus' name. You're free in Jesus' name. You're free. I want you to say that. I am free in Jesus' name. Can you do it one more time? I am free in Jesus' name. Well, tomorrow night is Mo Monday, and I want you to uh, be here 7 o'clock um, and just come expecting God to move in your life. You are now free in Jesus' name, free to go. Be blessed. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night.